I was thinking this morning about um, the grind of building a business, of mm -hmm. building a platform, and everything that that takes into it, uh, that you have to take into account when you mm -hmm. do that. Uh, social media is like, for me, is like this an incredibly unfortunate uh, part of it. <laughs> like I'm a total reluctant social media person. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I do it because out of necessity, but not because I like it. You can probably tell. Um, <laughs> but uh, but I, but the thing that that really kind of was I was thinking about this morning is is weighing the the value of the platform and the and the purpose mm -hmm. that God has placed in your heart. Because yeah. for me, I'll tell you something that I, and this is going to be really soul bearing to you for a moment. Um, I wanted to talk about things that I felt like I didn't hear pastors and other Christians really discussing. Uh, and really having nuanced conversations about. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard pretty much like cultural norms being uh, affirmed, mm -hmm. but not really Christian perspectives on real issues uh, that, you know, 2020 just exploded with. Yeah. And, uh, and so I found myself sometimes falling into the trap, to be totally honest with you, of trying to say things for, not for the sake of clickbait, but for the sake of trying to be different. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it was almost like I was... I was building platform and and sometimes not as much focusing on the purpose for why I'm doing what I'm doing. Right. Um, and then maybe even kind of because Christians have these struggles that maybe other people really don't even have. Uh, maybe even like talking to people uh, or talking about things that where you're castigating one side, like you're talking about leftists mm -hmm. or progressive Christians or something like that. And you're talking about it in such a way where you paint them as the enemy, but not the people that you want to win because right. you know that you can you can reach people who are despise those kind of things mm -hmm. um, with with certain kind of rhetoric. And I and I just thought to myself, man, it's easy to lose your focus in the midst of building a platform. Mm -hmm. It's easy to lose your focus with the with the purpose that yeah. God has called you to. And the last thing I'll say about that, and then I'd love to hear you respond about how you've kind of weighed that balance because you got to build a platform, right? Yeah. Well, if you don't have a platform, people aren't going to listen to you, right. but but also I'm reminded that God didn't call Abraham to build a nation. That was God's job. Mm -hmm. He just called him to have a baby. Correct. And that baby was the thing that produced the nation, um, you know, slowly but surely. So I've just been thinking about that whole thing, about making sure that you got a strong purpose. Mm -hmm. and, and so many people, uh, especially younger people than us these days, and maybe people like us, millennials and such, are so in love with a platform that they haven't really figured out if they got a purpose for their platform. I agree 100%. I, I will say this boldly that the purpose is way bigger and has to be bigger than the platform. Mm -hmm. I think we all have a platform. Sure. But the question is, what are you going to do with it? Yeah, man. And if your purpose is not bigger than your platform, then it's probably just going to crumble. If you're yeah. doing it for the wrong reason, of course. And that was, you know, that's something that I dealt with early in, I'll say my career, but early in ministry, because. You know, there's a sound. There's a there's a, there's a particular or sp specific sound that a generation can identify with, mm -hmm. and I felt like my sound didn't identify with the younger generation. Not saying that I'm old, because I'm not. I'm you know I'm, I'm part of the younger generation, but how old are you? I won't say that on record because you know <laughs> who cares about numbers. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just young. And yeah. I'm grateful. Me, me you um, and me both. <laughs> but um, definitely not close to forty myself. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, absolutely not. Um, where were we at? Where were we going? <laughs> There's a sound. Purpose. That, yeah, yeah, the sound, man. There's a sound that, you know, certain generations identify with. And in the beginning, I felt like, you know what, my sound doesn't identify with this mm. generation coming behind us. And so there was a temptation to want to change your sound to sort of fit in yeah. or be uh, relevant with this generation that's coming up behind you. And God quickly corrected me. He said, it's not what I called you to do. That's good. I called you to preach the gospel. Do you, be you, be who I made you to be. Yeah. Don't conform to it. You know, the scripture says don't conform to the world. Don't conform to that generation. Don't conform to what everybody else is doing. Be you. And I had to, I had to be comfortable with being me. And when I finally got comfortable with being me, I understood that, you know what, not everybody is assigned to have a mega ministry, mm -hmm. but you can still have a mega voice in your ministry. Mm -hmm. And the sooner I understood that, the sooner numbers didn't matter to me. Mm -hmm. The sooner that audience, audience sizes didn't matter. Platform, you know, the platform that we have, you know, whether it be churches, whether it be, you know, 
jails and prisons or schools or social media, whatever it is, you're there for somebody, yeah. even if it's just one body. Mm -hmm. So the question is, are you willing to do this just for one person or do you got to have a million? You can catch brand new episodes of Indie Thinker with Reed Huberman every Monday and weekly bonus episodes to keep you thinking throughout the week. But you have to subscribe and click the bell to be notified when new episodes drop. If you enjoy this content, make sure to like this video and share it with friends.